Hi folks, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the X1 Pro from X Laser Lab. This is a 700 watt fiber laser welder, cutter, and cleaning machine, which is the big brother to the 400 watt X1 pulse laser welder that I featured on here a few months ago. Unlike the X1, the X1 Pro uses a wire feeder and can perform both pulse and continuous welding of carbon and stainless steel, aluminum, copper, and brass, and it comes with various torch tips to accommodate different wire sizes from 0.8mm or 0.03 inches up to 1.6mm or 1 16th of an inch, as well as cutting and cleaning torch tips. This machine can accept 110 to 240 volts AC power and is air cooled with a duty cycle range of 10 to 90%, a frequency range of 1 to 3000 Hz, and it can use either nitrogen, argon, or compressed air. Included with the welder in the basic kit is the wire feeder, 5 meter cables, torch nozzles, torch lenses, and laser shielded safety glasses. You will need to provide your own 6 mm or quarter inch tubing and fittings for your gas connection. For this video, I'm setting up the welder with 0.8 mm or 0.03 inch wire and nitrogen gas to test welding and cutting mild and stainless steel. I need to get a tank of argon to weld soft metals, so I'll save that for a future video. The main screen on the display allows you to select between welding, cutting, and cleaning processes. Clicking Confirm opens the settings for the process you choose so you can adjust them to suit your material. After opening the weld settings, I click the wire feed icon to enable it, then I click the gas icon to turn the gas on and set the flow rate through my tank regulator to 15 liters per minute. Once the regulator was set, I click the gas icon again to turn the gas off. If something isn't connected or working properly, an error will show at the top of the screen and the monitoring system will tell you what's wrong. In the top right corner you can select your material type and thickness from a list which will generate presets for your selection so that you have a benchmark to start with. In this case I'm starting with 1mm thick mild carbon steel. You can adjust the settings as you see fit and the machine will automatically save them for the next time that you work with that material. Higher power and lower frequency produces more heat for deeper penetration. The swing width is the laser scanning width which is how far the laser beam oscillates and determines the size of the weld bead which can be up to 5mm. In this case I'm using a 2mm swing width to produce a 2mm wide bead. I'm no pro, but these are some of the best welds I've ever produced. I should say they're the best welds that I've seen a machine that I'm using produce, because I really didn't have to do anything except point the torch and pull the trigger. This machine makes welding super easy. But is it strong? I put it through some abuse to test that, and the base metal ended up tearing apart with no damage to the weld. I'll do an etch test on thicker material later in this video to show weld penetration. But for now let's check out how it welds 2mm thick stainless steel using the machine presets. I could have used a bit more power, but this looks like another successful weld. Next I tried 3mm mild steel, which is the maximum thickness that this machine is rated for. I made a few passes to fill this joint and tried to make it look like a TIG weld on the final pass. I personally prefer the smooth and clean look that laser welders produce naturally, but I think this helps to show how easy it is for the average person to control. Not that I don't respect the pros who've spent years developing their skill set, but ease of use matters too.
Again, there's no signs of stress on the weld despite significant abuse. For curiosity's sake, I decided to try welding some 6mm thick mild steel plate. So this was pretty impressive. I didn't expect this to hold up at all. I thought for sure the weld would snap, but I ended up breaking my vise instead. I figured this would be a good piece to do an etch test with, so I cut it in half and sanded the edges down to a near polish with 600 grit sandpaper. Then I dabbed a few drops of etching solution on the welds to reveal the fusion lines which was just a 50-50 solution of hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar with a pinch of salt. The butt joint is a little hard to see in the video, but there was sufficient penetration on both it and the T-joint, which is much easier to see. I'm not sure I would trust it for welding structural plates supporting large dynamic loads on a piece of heavy equipment or something critical like that without more thorough testing, but I'm pretty sure this machine's limits are a little underrated in the right hands. Satisfied with its welding performance, I moved on to set up the torch and machine for cutting 1mm thick steel. For this, I switched over to using compressed air at 60 psi. My free hand cutting is pretty shaky, but it cuts through like a hot knife and butter, so I tried 3mm thick steel next. Again, there were no problems, so I stepped it up to cutting 6mm steel plate. I had to take it slow to give it time to punch through, but it did manage. Next, I cut through a 10mm bolt without much problem. As you can see from the marks on my floor, once the beam cuts through the material, it'll keep going until it hits something that stops it. Cutting should really be done on a proper cutting table with a steel or brick lined bottom that can absorb the beam so you don't end up starting a fire or cutting your toes off. 
Next, I switched over to the cleaning torch tip and set the machine up to strip some rust and grime from some old tools using 100% power and 1000 Hz. It's also pretty effective at stripping paint, too. Just make sure to wear a respirator and do it in a well-ventilated area. So that's it for this video, folks. I'm really pleased with how this welder performs. At just 700 watts, it's definitely not comparable in power to a typical 3 or 4 kilowatt MIG or TIG welder, so don't expect to weld something like half inch thick steel plate with it. But the results that I got welding and cutting material that was twice as thick as it's rated for without any problems was pretty impressive. But let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see more of this machine, then be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to use it to finally build the tube chassis for my electric dirt bike over the next couple of weeks. I'm also working with Golden Motor on this project, who've generously provided a 10 kilowatt to 20 kilowatt peak dual stator, three phase permanent magnet synchronous motor, and a 72 volt easy control field oriented speed controller to power it. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time to see this happen, and I appreciate your patience. I'll post a bench test video for the motor and controller next week. Until then, thanks for watching and take care, folks.